Let's get in there now. There was Newton, mm -hmm. and Newton said, um, uh, every, with action. every every action, there is a reaction. The opposite and equal reaction. Opposite uh -huh. and equal reaction. Okay, now explain how then you have basically um, created something which is actually really contrary to that. Well, what he uh, said basically was that if you were going to propel anything, there had to be two objects. One object created the force, mm -hmm. and that force then reacted against the uh, second object. Like the wheels on a car, they create the force, and then they react against the ground. Now, if you take the ground out from under the wheels, you're not going anywhere. So what I did was basically created a system where if you were in a car using my system, the wheels would not uh, propel the car. <clears throat> Excuse me, you would have a, one of my CIP units behind the engine creating the internal force inside of the car and then your wheels would merely be used to direct your car and to roll on. And of course it goes contrary to every law of motion you can imagine. But the thing is we do have the proof now that we did it and uh, the uh, surprise at Boeing aircraft was just incredible to say the least they they never expected it but uh we were all in a state of shock the the uh, test required two days of continuous testing really? because they couldn't believe that the instruments were set up properly and they had to recheck and double check okay and uh -huh. no reaction force well, you know they say a picture is worth a thousand words bob and you were talking about an automobile so let's just use our imagination right now and um, let's pretend that this is an automobile or mm -hmm. something like that, right? Yeah. And it has wheels on both sides or whatever have mm -hmm. you. So what you're saying here, Bob, is that uh, the reactionless drive, as it can is applied to an automobile, it then basically just sends the automobile on its way. It's just on its sitting on the wheels, right? Mm -hmm. And then it creates a force, you know, that actually is the force behind that shoots out energy and that, that shoots the car yeah. forward or but how does that basically it doesn't work? throw anything away it's just like if you could imagine an artificial gravity uh -huh. created inside of the car okay and this was pushing against the motor and uh, it's uh, that old uh, what they call pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps uh, okay. principle mm -hmm. and so here the neat thing about this system is you could use a very small electric motor to turn the CIP engine and so instead of carrying a, uh, about 2,000 pounds of batteries to make your electric car go 70 or 80 miles without recharging <clears throat> you would only need a couple of 20, 12 volt batteries and this system once it got going would regenerate power to uh, keep the, the CIP unit going and it would then recharge the batteries and again that's supposed to be impossible but in science they uh, <clears throat> told me years ago if I could circumvent Newton's third law and the this other thing they call the conservation of angular momentum that was mm -hmm. a law written by uh, John Wallace a contemporary of Newton they said if you can break those two laws you, you can do this and so like I say on November of last year we finally had the proof i had been doing this since 1968, but mm -hmm. the models were too crude. <clears throat> United Airlines did do a s series of testing in 1972, mm -hmm. and they did what they call an accelerometer test. That showed that it worked, but nobody believed the engineers at United. They said they did it wrong, and uh, it couldn't possibly be true, and uh, it's typical human nature. Okay. Human nature refuses to believe <clears throat> the new and so-called impossible ideas but okay. Bob now the uh, there is an idea that's floating around uh, relative to a propulsion system there's something called a uh, perpetual motion yeah system mm -hmm. right now what's the difference between a, a perpetual motion system and uh, your particular well uh, perpetual yeah. motion is something that you get started and it goes on forever my system has to have energy uh, applied to it to make it go, so it's not a perpetual motion machine. Okay. It's a very efficient propulsion system, but you have to have an electric motor or something that they uh, technically call a, a prime mover, and the prime mover can be a, an electric motor, a gasoline engine, steam, anything to make the 
uh, system spin. Okay, and it's mechanical. And, yeah, it's all mechanical. Okay, now that's very interesting. So therefore, there are moving parts. Yeah, there's plenty of moving parts there. Okay, so with that, Bob, mm -hmm. uh, over a period of time, if you have these parts and they're coagulating together, uh, doesn't that create attrition? And as a result of that, parts wear out and then malfunctions could occur? Well, yeah, the, the system can wear out, but the thing is, uh, <clears throat> if you compare it to a, a system we use now, like, like let's go back to the electric car. Mm -hmm. Like I say, most cars will go 70, maybe 90 miles without uh, before you recharge them. Now, if you put my system in that car, you can, like I say, reduce the number of batteries you'll need. And the difference will be my system will then have a set of alternators on the wheels. Now, the way my system would work, you would start the car with these two batteries that would run the motor that would activate the CIP engine. The car would start rolling, and as soon as the, the alternators on the wheels reached enough speed to generate enough power, this could then be fed back to the motor running the CIP engine, and then you could disconnect the battery and run power from the wheels to the CIP engine. Now, you can't do that with a regular, uh, say, a regular electric motor and generator because mm -hmm. they're not efficient enough. With my system being over what they call over unity efficient, uh, why, why you can do this, and theoretically, we've proven we can do it. Okay.